Okay everyone, this is going to be the last part of this tutorial series and I'm going to have to apologize because I had this whole last bit recorded already went to save it and Camtasia Studio crashed so I actually went, I've been through and I've filled out the rest of this so I'm going to have to just guide you through it and rather than go through and you watch me type it or copy it or anything like that so we're just going to go through from the top right down to the bottom and I'll try and explain as best I can what's going on you should probably watch these uh, videos in full screen by the way because you'll be able to see every detail and all, all the, the text will be a lot clearer so we're going to declare the, the sheet texture the tie sheet texture we want to make this public static that means it's accessible from anywhere because we need to access it through the map so we're going to declare a level so that's level dot level map just call it map and declare the player that's actors dot player player declare collision variables that's the normal collision which is how much you're colliding by how, uh, the direction that we need to push the player out of the wall or whatever it's hitting um, and the collision distance which is the final amount we're going to offset it by and I'll show you that in a wee minute so now we want to construct the, the level so that's just map equals new map it's basic construction construct the player player equals new map new tile game dot actors dot player pass in the content manager called content and pass in the client bounds of the window so the size of the window that's we'll pass it in as a new vector that's window dot client bounds dot width window dot client bounds dot height that gives you the height and width of the actual window the XNA window so down here we want to load the map and the tile set so we'll load the tile set first so we'll call it, we'll call it the tile sheet uh, we'll say that equal to content.load texture2d and then the, the file path which is textures and test sheet for mine then we want to load the map and that's the position it's at in the content folder as well so it's content maps and test dot text um, map dot load tile set and pass in tile sheet and map dot populate collision there so basically we're loading the tile sheet loading the map and separating the tile sheet into separate into different tiles and then we're populating the collision layer from our solid layer so after that we'll go down and we'll I'll just show you the collision function uh, before we go into the update or anything like that so it's a private boolean because we want to know whether it actually is colliding or not call it is colliding we'll pass in two rectangles body one and body two body one will be the collision rectangle for the player body two will be the collision rectangle from the collision list in the level object so first thing I want to do is reset the normal vector so we don't want any previous collisions to influence this one then we want to get the center of each body basically we're just creating a new vector called body one center and uh, getting the x position and offsetting it by half the width y position offsetting it by half the height um, body two center here um, the same with that x position half the width by position half the height. Then we want to declare two local vectors and these are just going to be used to determine the normal vector. Then these are the actual the x magnitude and the y magnitude are the actual individual components of the normal vector. Next thing we want to do is get the difference in position of the two rectangles. Because we've uh, declared these as vectors we can just use distance equals body one center minus body two center and that gives us how far away they are from each other. Um, as a vector, so we want to get the combined half width, and half height, half heights of the rectangles. Um, basically, this is going to be used for um, determining the the magnitude of the normal vector, um, deciding how to push it out, push one out of the other. So, we want to calculate the absolute distance according to the distance 
So all that means is that the absolute distance, which is going to be used to determine the normal vector as well, um, we're just uh, getting the magnitude of the distance itself. Um, and so if if the distance ends up being a minus, then we're we're going to make it positive because we only want to work with positive values here. Um, and the y as well, if that's negative, we're just, just going to make it positive. The exact same magnitude, the ex exact same intensity. So th now we want to check if there actually is a collision. And we do that by checking the absolute distance against the the x add and y add, which are the half heights and widths. Basically this says that if the absolute distance is less than x add and the absolute distance is sorry, if the absolute distance at x is greater than x add and the absolute distance at y is greater than y add, then there is no collision. So they're further apart. They're they're not colliding with each other. Next thing we want to do is get the magnitude of the normal vector. So that's determined by the overlap in the rectangles, which is pretty common sense. So the x magnitude is x add minus the absolute distance, and the y magnitude is y add minus the absolute distance dot y. So, and we only want to adjust the normal vector in the direction of the least significant overlap. So, the smallest distance is how we want to offset it. Okay, so if the x magnitude is less than the y magnitude, then we want to offset on the y. Otherwise, we want to offset, or so we want to offset on the x. Otherwise, we want to offset on the y and return true for the collisions. So I'm just going to go up and run you through the update function here. So we want to update the player. So the player dot update collision distance equals vector two dot zero. Resets the collision distance. Then we want to loop through all the collision rectangles. And um, that's just the the collision rectangle list that's in the the map. And we say if is colliding plus past the player collision rectangle and the map collision rectangle. Um, so then uh, then there is a collision. Uh, if there is a collision, we want to get the large, the most severe collision. So if the collision if the normal dot length is greater than uh, the collision distance dot length, so if it's if it has uh, more intensity, if it's more severe, then we're going to set the collision distance equal to the normal. The collision distance is what we're going to offset the player's position by. So pretty much that's what we want to do. So if we have a severe collision here and we go through to the next one, we don't want to offset it again by that small amount. We just want to make this the big, the biggest collision, and that that works out very well. <coughs> and it d means we're not updating the player's position all the time. <coughs> Sorry, my voice is gone. Okay, so the last thing we want to do is update the player's position by the collision distance. So player dot position dot x equal plus equals collision distance dot x. Player dot position dot y plus equals collision distance dot y. And then we want the draw function. So we just want to begin the sprite patch call. Then we want to draw the map and pass the player to it so that we can work out the the scroll values. Then we want to end the sprite patch after base.draw. Um that's pretty much it. I changed the the background colour clear to black because I think it looks cooler. And we'll just show you what we end up with here. Which is kind of cool. You can make a platformer or whatever. Um, so, pretty much that's it. I uh, hope you've enjoyed it. Please consider subscribing. Leave me a comment, whatever. If you're having trouble, personal message me. I'll try and help you out as much as I can. Thanks for watching. And I'll uh, hopefully have some more tutorials up. I haven't decided what they might be yet. So don't expect them anytime soon. But, uh... I'll have a lot of other videos coming out about my current projects and stuff, so subscribe and you might see something cool. Thanks.